Hi, this is Dylan Paiva, your Club 420 Class Executive Director. I'm here with a former sailor of the Club 420, Mariner Fagan, and we're going to show you guys how to splice your own spinner sheets. So these are the tools that we're going to need to make the spin sheets. Uh, first of all, we have the tape measure. This is how we decide how, this is how we measure how long the taper is going to be. And then we have the scissors, which we use to trim the part of the line that we've tapered. Uh, then we have a Sharpie, which we use to mark where our actual taper is going to be. And this is probably the most important tool. This is our puller. Uh, this is just a standard de-splicer. Uh, I, I just got a kit of these on Amazon. This is our fid. This is what we're going to use to actually uh, pull the core of the line outside of the cover. Next we have our needle, which we use for the whipping twine at the end when we're finished with the splice. And then just a standard lighter to burn the line. Okay, so here are our 36 foot, six millimeter spin sheets. We've gone ahead and marked the spin sheet with a black Sharpie at eight and a half feet from the end. And this is where we're gonna start the taper and pull the core out of the cover. And we've also tied a knot here a little bit farther up the line to prevent the cover from slipping while we're tapering it. So we go back to the our black mark and we're gonna to start to pull the core out of the cover. And we're gonna, so in order to do this, we're gonna loosen it up with our fingers, just push it together, milk it around to loosen up the cover, and then take our fid here and start trying to pull the core of the line outside of the cover. So now we have the core out of the cover and I'm going to completely pull the core out of the cover from eight and a half feet to the end where we tied our mark. And in order to do this, you'll often have to pull the core out and then milk the cover to pull the core through. Now you can see we have two ends. We have the core and then the cover that does not have a core in it. And this is the root where we started. And you can see our knot here. So in order to make sure that everything's still together, we're gonna milk the, the cover down from past our knot to the mark. So now we know that everything's still together down here and nothing's shifted around. And then once we're done with this, we are going to cut the cover uh, at eight inches, approximately eight inches past our splice. And once we've done this, we're gonna take our de-splicer and then bury the cover inside of the core. So then once we've led the fizz from outside of the core, we take the cover and pull it through. Now you can see I have the cover of the line in my de-splicer and I'm ready to pull it through the core. And it's important to make sure that the cover is at the very end of the line. As you can see here, this is the smallest, loosest part that'll be able to pull through the core the easiest. And as you can see, once I'm at the end, now it pulls through relatively easy, easily.
So now you see I have the cover fully, fully pulled through the core. And once again, I'm gonna make sure I milk the line past the knot to make sure everything's together. After I have the line set up like this and I fully milked the cover back here over the core to make sure it's together, I'm going to taper the end of the cover. And I do this by taking my fid and just pulling the strands apart. And this, this is important to make sure that the splice locks in once, you, once it's in. and you can see it's pulling over relatively easily. So now our line is, our cover is fully buried and we have a nice smooth taper. You can see we go from cover here and then where our black mark is, the line's pulled out and that transitions smoothly to the core of the line. And so now our taper is ready to go and to lock it in we are going to use whipping twine and a, our needle. Okay, so now to lock in our taper, we're gonna do a lock stitch with our whipping twine and our needle. And we're gonna do this right over where the taper is in the line. So our first step is to go through and create four loops on each side of the line. And it's important to pull it through, so then you can come back around at the end. But not all the way, because we still need to, we're gonna need to use these loops in a second. So now we can see we have the four loops total, two on, one, two on each side. And in order to lock this, then we're gonna flip the line 90 degrees, put it on its side, and then go back through the sides of these loops. So once we've created the loops, it's important to finish through the same hole that we started with. And once we're done with this, we pull both ends to secure it. So now you can see it's totally tight and it's squeezing the line together. We don't want it to be too scrunched up, just tight so the whole line's smooth. To cure it, we tie a square knot. Now that the ends are cut, we're going to take our lighter and 
just burn the ends of the whipping twine. Now that our ends are burned, we're just going to shove them back into the core and smooth it over. And you can see our taper is complete and stitched so it won't move.